Well, first of all, my name is Linda Velarde, and I'm from Velarde, New Mexico, and I'm here helping Guillermo Chavez Rosette. Uh, he is the lead artist on, the, on this mural, uh, the Chicano Park Takeover, and I am his assistant, so it's a privilege and an honor to be here helping with uh, this historic place, Chicano Park. Um, and uh, being uh, allowed to assist in, in something that's very historic and that deserves to be preserved here. <laughs> well, the entire park, the entire mural itself has to be restored uh, because it, this was painted, I forget what it was painted in 1978, I believe. And uh, so it's faded, it's had some water damage, it has some things that Caltrans needed to replace uh, so that this doesn't happen again. And so the whole mural itself is being restored. Uh, Guillermo has added a few things that he felt was missing in the, in, the, in the mural before, but basically it is the same story and it has very historical parts in it about the Chicano Park takeover. As you probably know the story, they, they uh, wanted to put a police station here and a parking lot here. And so the students came and the Brown Berets came to protest and say, no, not in our neighborhood. This place here, this park, all of this entire park had been housing before. And so they condemned it and evicted the people and then, and then they wanted to put in, like I said, the, the freeway and they wanted to put a police station. So once uh, Marco Solis heard of that, he organized the students to come and say no and, and I believe they stayed here protesting for about 12 days. And so for this to be called the Chicano Park takeover, this mural, I think it is important to see those different layers of the people that were there in the beginning, like, uh, you know, protesting uh, with a tractor, protesting with, with hoes and, and rakes and saying that they wanted to make this a park for the people in the barrio so that they could ha leave a legacy for the people in Barrio Logan, uh, which I think is important because a lot of times communities get displaced and, and get gentrified. And it's important to have preservation and conservation of open spaces for people, especially because they were homes before. And on the bottom part of the mural there, behind the runner, you can see that those were also, they left those homes in there to recognize that this really was a place where people lived. Um, and it's still a place where people live, you know, now because they bring their children. So it's a thriving place, but there were people and homes uh, that had to be moved and were displaced. And so it's important when we do mural painting to tell the story and to actually tell the right story and the correct story of the history, especially on one that is named the Chicano Park Takeover. So how is that going to be done to tell the story uh, that's on there? Um, on the side of the wall, on this side over here, we're going to write the story. And so that's the last part of the mural we're doing is we're going to actually write the story and, and tell really what the mural means. Uh, many of them are doing that. Some of them have been finished. And so Chicano Park Steering Committee has asked us if we could please write a little bit. Because many people come and say it's beautiful art. And it is that. But there's deeper meetings in mural paintings and, and what it means for all of us to understand who we are and where we're come, where we've come from, and where we're going, and it, it's it's about resistance too, and so that people understand that as a collective, and if we're ni united, and that we understand that uh, we're together on things, that we can save places like this. And so I think it's important to put the history to uh, to acknowledge what's on the murals themselves, because many people can come and say, "Oh, that's really nice," but do they know that on the top pillar is Cuauhtémoc, and why would we paint Cuauhtémoc? or why is there another pillar here that has Cuauhtémoc? It's important to know uh, that a lot of us, especially Guillermo, he helped bring uh, the danza to the United States 40 years ago with his maestro Florencio Yescas. And so Totecas in Islan has been in this park as a danza group as well as an artist group uh, with a danza behind it. And Cuauhtémoc is the last Aztec leader and king spiritual leader as well and uh, we still have danza groups here not only here in, in, in uh, Cali Aslan but in many places in Nuevo Mexico and Colorado Aslan in Texas so it's, it's a growing thriving spiritual practice and his descendants are alive and well in Ixcatiopan, Guerrero, Mexico and we have a very profound relationship with Cuauhtémoc's descendants. Uh, Guillermo and I were privileged to go there and paint uh, 
murals in Iscatiopan at his place of birth. Um, and we painted one at the uh, Tuatuani, which is his descendants' home. We painted a mural there of the discovery of his remains. And then in the plaza, we painted a picture of Cuauhtémoc, actually, uh, similar to the one that's up there. It was a little bit bigger. And, uh, and so it was a privilege and honor to be allowed to do that and to, to, to have this confianza uh, with Cuauhtémoc's uh, direct descendants. And I think it's interesting, as Danzantes, many people, as Danzantes, we need to, that's an understanding that we have to have too, that we're not just these Danzantes to do dance. We're there because it's a spiritual practice. We're there because these people have maintained his palabra for 15 generations. Uh, they're passing on his palabra. They, he has two, uh, uh, his two descendants uh, the, from the, the 20s, has, he's already passed his palabra on to them. One is his grandson and one is his son. And so it's important to know these things that we're not just here to put penachos y trajes y, y ver bien bonitos. We're here because it, is, has a, it has a deeper meaning about who we are and where we've come from and, and what spiritual practice means, I think, in this world and, and, and how it is bringers of peace and, and how it is bringers of, of, of maintaining our culture and, 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 and who we are as Mexicanos, as Chicanos, Chicanas, Mexicanas, and understanding what la Mexicanidad means a través the, 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 of our spiritual practice. And we, and we also help uh, with circles uh, and, and bring spiritual practice to uh, youth and especially youth at risk. Uh, we do a lot of uh, building community with youth, it, a lot in uh, the Oakland area uh, with young people to understand uh, movement work, that there is, there's a lot of depth to movement work and that understanding of what spiritual practice means in movement work that you just can't go out and protest and come back and then it's over. There's a deeper, deeper meaning to that. And also what it means when you are in movement work of what your responsibility is in a collective. That each and, all, each and every one of us has a responsibility to each other. So you can't leave the group and just, okay, I'm done. Because we're all in, if we're protesting, we're all in it together. We all have to come together, we have to leave together. We have to process together after. We have to have an understanding of what happened or what didn't happen. And so it's, it, it, nosotros decimos formación en español, es una palabra muy única en español, yo creo, y que, y que mucha gente no entienda formación, porque es mucho en el movimiento en Centroamérica, en México, eh, esa palabra. Y fue cuando nosotros estábamos levantándonos y estábamos protestando para nuestros derechos, eh, y para los derechos de la gente indígena y para todos los seres humanos. Entonces, formación es muy importante porque si uno está formado, no saben qué están haciendo. Entonces, tenemos que formarnos y yo creo que tenemos una responsabilidad a la juventud y a nosotros mismos que estamos ayudando a ellos a entender esa palabra profundamente. ¿Qué estamos haciendo cuando estamos formando gente? ¿Qué responsabilidad tenemos? Y, 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 y también ellos, ¿qué responsabilidad tienen ellos ¿verdad? a esa palabra? Y para irnos adelante, que nadie se quede atrás. Tenemos que ir todos juntos, porque si no vamos juntos y alguien se quede atrás, no es irresponsable a nosotros de hacer eso, ¿no? Entonces, that's what we do with young people. We try to give them grounding, give them roots, understand basic things of organizing, basic things about protesting. And it's about really being barriers of peace, that we want to go in there to do peaceful protests so that our messages are heard. Because if you go in there with anger, that's what you come out with is anger. And with anger, righteous anger has its place, but it doesn't win the cause. What wins the causes is that we have understanding and that we can have a dialogue. And a dialogue is two-way. I understand you and you understand me and we have a right to disagree. But what we're trying to do is to come to common ground because we're all human beings living in this, we're privileged to live in this world. And so we have a responsibility to each other to live in this world so that everybody has access to the same resources and that nobody is hungry, thirsty, sin casa, you know, so that, that's what we try to do with youth to say that there's another way. There's another way. And I think we have to see the other way because some of the ways, the hard knocks ways have not worked. And so we're in a new moment. And I think that uh, young people these days actually have so much access to things, the internet, everything's speeded up 
that in reality they don't know how to slow down and they don't know how to ha put thought into what they're doing and thinking where this comes from. Eh, si vamos a dañar a otra persona, ¿qué estamos haciendo? Dañando a nosotros mismos. So we ha our actions have to be right actions and they have to come through, through compassion. It's not tolerance. Nobody wants to be tolerated. We want to be embraced. We don't want to be tolerated. And so we want to have compassion, which has two meanings. Compassion has two meanings. Ko, which means ourself and others. And passion, meaning that we have the passion to do the action that we want because it's, it's reciprocal. And we give and we take. And everybody in the circle matters, no matter how big, how small, whether we speak or not speak, we all have our place in the circle and it's one voice and everybody matters and I think that's what comes back to this park is everybody matters here well I've been here I have talked to a lot of the homeless people that live here and many of them own this park they say where do you live and they'll say I live right here in Chicano Park and I ask them personally what do you think about the mural restoration and they're just so they never say it's for me they say it's for all of us and so that's a beautiful part, even with homeless people that are, are displaced and that we have to have compassion with them. We had incidences where there were a lot of anger with them and we have, as we say, hemos conquistado sus corazones con palabras, con acciones para decir que esto es para ellos también, no más no es para nosotros. We're not painting for ourselves, we're painting for everyone here. And that privilege and that honor has to manifest out so that impoverished people, young children, all of them see that this is for us. One little girl that was two years old, she came up and she said, oh my God, you're painting a rainbow from the sky. Those were her words. And we said, why do you think that? And she said, it's so beautiful colors and everybody's happy. And so it's nice to see from uno que es inocente como dicen, that they can see that beauty. And what we want to teach, I believe, in this world is how we walk in beauty and walk in beauty with one another, with each other. And I think as you see when these, all of these murals get restored, 18 of them are going to get restored, you'll see the beauty of these artists coming back after 40 years. And many of them, the original artists, some have died, but many of the original artists coming back feeling that privilege and that honor to, to come back and do this for, for, for not only themselves, but for everyone, and, and, and unconditionally everybody says that it's for everyone. This is a, not about an individual thing, it's about a collective, it's about collaboration. And I think that those are words we need to use in this park so we can teach young people. Collaboration, cooperation, communication, communion, they all have that co-part, CO, which means two. It's not about me, it's about us. And that's what I think Chicano Park is too, is it, it is about us, you know, and that, that people are honored and they own the park as a collective. It's not an individual thing, it's a collective.